Welcome to Online Fundraising Strategies for Giving Day Campaigns. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup Global. I've been with the organization for nearly seven years, and prior to that spent a decade working at small nonprofits in Washington, D.C. and Oakland, California. I was regularly the accidental techie having to decide on technology uh, for my organizations, and ran online social media, communications campaigns, fundraising, uh, kind of all of the above, wearing many hats in small organizations. So I'm happy to be your host for today's event and for all of TechSoup's webinars. Also joining us today is Lori Finch, the Vice President of Community Giving at Kimbia. And Kimbia manages the uh, Give Local America event that's coming up on May 5th. And she helps coordinate the strategy behind that largest single day online crowdfunding event in history that last year in 2014 raised $53 million on one day. So prior to Kimbia, Lori spent six years at the San Diego Foundation where she served as Director of Nonprofit Programs, developing education resources and tools for more than 250 local nonprofits. We're glad to have her joining us today. Also on the line is Josh Hirsch, and he is the Director of Development and Chief Gratitude Officer at the Weiss School in Florida. He also has a great deal of experience with online fundraising. He has a Certificate in Strategic Fundraising and Philanthropy from Bay Path College, and is a graduate of Nonprofits First Sustainability and Social Enterprise Institute. He began his career uh, working with educational philanthropy in 2008 working at the Palm Beach School for Autism as their Director of Development and Marketing. He is also a member of the Association of Fundraising Professionals, Palm Beach County Chapter, where he serves as the Communications Chair. And he most recently served as the Marketing Chair for Planet Philanthropy 2014 the statewide conference for AFP Florida chapters. So we are here where I have pointed to us on the map. We as in TechSoup Global are in San Francisco headquarters right now. That would be myself and Allie. We also, I'm, I've pointed to where Lori is in Washington, D.C. and where Josh is in Palm Beach, Florida. Go ahead and chat into us in the window and let us know where you're joining from today. At the moment we have a little more than 200 people on the line. That number is surely to rise as we get a few more minutes into this event. We have people chiming in from Texas, Wisconsin, Arizona, Michigan, Indiana, South Carolina, Virginia, Minnesota, Tennessee, California, New York, all over the country. So we're really glad to have you all joining us. A look at today's agenda. We'll do an introduction to TechSoup quickly for those of you who aren't familiar with our work. We'll poll you on what your experience is with Giving Days. And then we'll launch into the conversation about strategies of successful campaigns. Josh will then talk a little bit about the 2014 strategies that worked for his organization at the Weiss School. He'll talk about some social media tools that helped him logistically roll out those strategies in action. And then he'll talk about the 2015 strategy planning that he's working toward for this May 5th event. Uh, and these can be applied to all kinds of giving days, not just Give Local America. But we wanted to do this in conjunction with them because these are strategies that you can launch during any giving day, whether it's a local community giving day, one that a foundation or a community foundation in your area is running, one that might be tied to a cause nationally that you're affiliated with, or something that you just come up with on your own. So we want to make sure that you've got some strategies to move forward with these kinds of events. So we'll talk a little bit about Give Local America 2015 for those of you who may still want to participate and get your organization registered. And then I'll talk a little bit about online fundraising tools that are available for donation through TechSoup, and some additional resources and how-tos that you can refer to while planning your own campaigns. We'll have time for Q&A at the end, but feel free to ask your questions throughout the webinar so that if we have time, we'll try and answer them on the back end or throughout. So TechSoup is a global network of 63 partner NGOs serving nonprofit and social benefit organizations in now 121 countries around the world. You can check out more about our work in our 2014 Year in Review. I am proud to have been a TechSoup user long before I was a TechSoup staff person at those three small organizations. I regularly got donated technology and accessed the resources like NetSquared Networks and community events and our forums. So I hope you'll check those out as well. I was active in the Washington, D.C. NetSquared 
uh, before I joined TechSoup. So if you are in any of the dots that you see on this map, many of them are hidden by these little uh, boxes, definitely check out where there are ways for you to connect. We have delivered nearly $5 billion worth of technology products and grants to the NGO and social goods sector around the world. So I'm proud to have been part of that in my small way. A lot of our work is done through our product donation programs, but also through those community events, educational resources, and events like this today. So you can check out more at TechSoup.org. On to the topic at hand. We are here to talk about online fundraising strategies. And so to start that off, I'd love to have you, our participants, take a moment to click on the response to this question. Have you participated in a Giving Day event in the past 12 months? And I put some examples there. Some of you may have participated directly for your organization's benefit, maybe in a campaign that you helped run. Maybe you participated as a donor or supporter for somebody else's organization or for a cause that you care about. Maybe you did the Ice Bucket Challenge. Maybe you participated in Giving Tuesday and donated a few bucks to some charities that you care about or some causes that you support. Uh, and feel free to chat in to let us know if there were specific events that you did help participate in. I see somebody writing in Give Out Day uh, for LGBTQ organizations. Uh, somebody participated as a donor and for a different organization. I'm sorry I didn't set that up to have more than one answer, but that's great that you let me know. We also have a comment saying uh, Train the Dog, Save a Warrior program. Great. We're glad to have you there. Somebody else is commenting that they participated in Big Payback. We know you can't see all of the chat questions and comments coming in, but if there's anything that our participants share that we think would be useful for the rest of you to know, we'll be sure to share that back out as well. So looking at the results so far, we have around 240 in the room at the moment participating today. And about half of you have participated in some type of Giving Day event in the past 12 months. So that's terrific. And about 43% have not. So really split down the middle here. But hopefully all of you will come away today with some useful information, whether it's a new tool that you didn't know about, or a strategy, or just hearing the experience of somebody else who's done it and the way that it worked for them that maybe you can employ this year for your campaigns. So with that, I'd love to go ahead and welcome Lori Finch from Kimbia to the line to tell us a little bit about why online fundraising campaigns work and how you can get involved and make them work for your own benefit. Thanks so much for joining us today, Lori. Well, thank you, Becky. Um, and thank you all for taking time out of your day today to learn a little bit more about online fundraising campaigns and, and strategies that will help, help make them a great part of your own fund development plans throughout the year. Um, I'm going to just give a little bit of an overview about why they work um, as well as um, some strategies for successful campaigns. And then Josh, uh, I'm really thrilled that he's joining us from Palm Beach um, to talk about his own experience and share. Um, so why do online fundraising campaigns work? Well, there's nothing like creating a sense of urgency. So online fundraising campaigns by design tend to be short um, and, and really create, in, in that of itself creates an urgency for people to give. Um, so we were capital campaigns where you may be building up to um, for you know, three to five years. These are ones that you can create a moment or a time to give, um, and that urgency really inspires people to give. Um, they work because they leverage social and peer-to-peer -peer fundraising model. Um, you all probably saw, if you're on Facebook, I don't know, or read the news, um, the Ice Bucket Challenge last year. So that element of peer-to-peer and asking or challenging individuals to give is one of the most effective ways um, to use online fundraising um, campaigns. Um, and they also appeal to a wide variety of aud audiences. Um, they, we see donors giving from all age groups, from all, um, all sizes of gifts. You can ask for a $10, $10 gift, 
um, to a 10,000 or even more. Um, we've seen gifts as large as 100,000 come through on some of these campaigns. Um, so they really, really appeal to a wide variety of ages and donor levels. So some strategies to think about and, and to think about these in context to what you'll hear um, Josh talk about next is that um, what we see for organizations who have the most effective campaigns is really um, setting goals. So set public goals um, and announce them out there. So if you have a goal of 100 new donors to your organization, 100 donors, um, $100 or $10,000, be sure to use um, that as a way to help excite and engage people. Most online tools allow you to track in real time your success, so you'll be able to update your audience throughout the campaign. Um, but, you know, this is an opportunity to make your network knowledgeable and excited, so to engage them. Um, think about using not just your donors or your board, but their network. So one that we've seen where there's been incredible success is where people have leveraged the networks of their networks and really gotten them excited about their cause. That's why we see 20 to 60% in some cases um, of individuals who participate in the event as first-time donors to those organizations. Um, online fundraising campaigns um, really help engage new donors, and a lot of new donors will give their first gift to your organization online. Another reason they're successful is that there's cre it, it offers you the opportunity to be creative. Um, so creative messaging and compelling digital assets can really help you um, make your campaign fun, exciting, and different from maybe a gala or other event that you have. There's lots of free resources out there to help. There's a number of resources that, and I'll, um, on the GiveLocalAmerica.org website. And Josh is going to tell you a little bit about how, um, a, a, about some as well. Um, and he's got resources available for you. I think I'm going to turn it over to Josh um, now, and he can share a little bit more about his organization and their success in a campaign this past year. Thanks, Lori. And I am going to share, as she mentioned, some tips and tools and some advice that we used last year uh, for The Great Give and how we've been moving this year forward with The Great Give. Give you a little background about the Weiss School. We're a small private independent school from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, specifically for gifted students. We have about 253 students from pre-K through 8th grade. And what's unique is that even though we've been around since 1989, the school went from a for-profit to a non-profit model uh, back in 2010. So the notion of charitable giving is still very much new to our families, and we're truly educating them about the culture of philanthropy that we're trying to build here at the school. So when we had the opportunity to participate in uh, the Great Give last year, I wasn't too sure really what would happen. Uh, it was at the beginning of May. It was the um, few weeks before school was ending. So you know, people have started to check out. Students have started to check out. So were we going to be successful? Um, so I did a very small 10-day communications plan, mainly focusing on uh, email communications through our weekly heads up email newsletter to our families. Uh, we did some posts on Facebook. We did some custom posts on Twitter. Um, Instagram was pretty popular last year, creating memes and, uh, and uh, the like. But we did no direct mail, and we had no committee. It was basically myself who said, all right, we're going to go forward, and we're going to do this, and we're going to see how successful we can be. Uh, so what we wanted to do, uh, as Lori mentioned, is it's a chance to be creative. And uh, you have a little bit of creative license when it comes to your materials that you use. Um, so for me, it was important to be able to create visual images that would really sum up what our school is in a very brief uh, image. So I've got a couple examples here today uh, that you can see. The key thing that I had running across through all my images was the branding. I wanted to make sure that you looked at an image, you knew that A, it was for the Y school, B, we were supporting gifted education, 
see that it had the Great Give logo on there, and then it also included the Great Give hashtag. Now these images I was posting on Facebook, I was posting them on Twitter, on Instagram, all leading up to the day itself. And I have a couple other examples. So here you can see an early childhood classroom, uh, very engaging with the technology. That's a smart board. All of our classrooms have smart boards. We're a very forward-thinking school when it comes to technology. So I wanted to be sure we highlighted that in this image. Uh, here are some middle school students that are uh, doing a dissection. Once again, you can see that cur uh, the concurrent branding running through all my images. Here is an early childhood classroom working one-on-one -on -one with a teacher. And in the background, you can see the students working with the uh, technology on the iPads. Um, but most importantly, I wanted to make sure we constantly thanked our donors um, because they are the lifeblood of who really made this event successful. Uh, so what was great about Kimbia is that they were giving you real-time data as your donors were coming in. So I was able to have on our Facebook page uh, at the top posted as a, as a pinned post was, uh, you know, I was saying, all right, we are at, at 30 donors at $15,000, and I list every person's name. Uh, if we were, you know, they were friends with our page, I made sure to tag them so it showed up on their page. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that they were really involved all the way through because they're the ones who made it such a success. So uh, as far as goals and results, as, as Lori mentioned, we wanted to set a goal. So we set a goal of $30,000, which was certainly a stretch, but that $30,000 was going to make us reach our overall annual fund uh, campaign goal for the year. Uh, so that's how we came up with that number. And it was key to have it all tied around the annual fund because that is the driving force with a lot of our fundraising here at this school. Uh, another goal of mine was to have an eighth grade class gift. We had never had a coordinated gift amongst the eighth graders. And here was a chance for students who were uh, uh, part of the first class that ever had started at the school at three years old in our pre-K-3 program. You know, so they had been at the school for nine, ten years, some of them, and it was a chance to really leave their mark and leave their legacy. So I was lucky enough to have an eighth grade parent who took the lead on that and really made it her mission. I'm happy to say that we not only met our goals, but we exceeded it. As you can see, uh, we reached 38,000 from 55 donors. And what was really exciting for me is that these 55 donors comprised new donors who had never supported the school before, donors who had lapsed, who had given uh, in previous years but not currently, um, but more importantly, donors had already given in the year and were repeat donors. Uh, we saw that donors came from all grade levels. It wasn't specific from one area, um, although the eighth grade class as a whole made the largest gift of close to $15,000, uh, including matching funds. And what was nice is that they were able to leave their legacy, and the uh, brand new science uh, lab that we built was dedicated to the eighth grade class of 2014. Out of the 330 nonprofits that participated in Palm Beach and Martin County, we raised the seventh highest total, um, which was shocking to me as a small little private school here in Palm Beach County where there are you know, hundreds and hundreds of nonprofits doing incredible things and major national nonprofits that have uh, home base um, and affiliate offices down here in Palm Beach County. So it really um, said a lot for the support from our families. Um, and most importantly, we had one new major donor that came out of it. And I'm going to touch on that uh, story in a second. Um, but when all was said and done, uh, and we found the final totals out from the United Way and, and uh, Community Foundation, I posted this uh, on our page. And you can see it was back in July of last year. And it was just so exciting to be part of something bigger. The day after the Great Give, I called every uh, donor, all 55. And the first question, obviously, I said thank you for your support. But the first question I had for them is, why? Why did you give? What was your motivation to support the school? What was it about this campaign that really wanted uh, for you to get your support behind? And I heard different answers from various families, but there was one family, and this is the family who uh, gave a $2,000 gift at 11.45 at night. That pushed us over our edge uh, to reach our goal of $30,000. And this family had been at this school for about four or five years had never made a, a financial commitment to the school, but always was willing to give support and advice. And the old adage, you ask for money, you get advice. You know, you ask for advice, you get a uh, donation. So when I was saying, you know, what really motivated you at this time, they said that they really liked the direction the school was going with our three-year initiative, uh, which we call the Centers of Excellence. And this year we launched that, center, uh, that Centers of Excellence initiative with the first two centers being language, arts, and science and technology. And to them, 
Technology was a hot button. That was their passion. And for me, it's very important to connect donors with their passion and make them understand the impact and result of the gifts because that's how you bring them in. It's one thing to get a donor for a first time, but we all know that it's much easier to retain a donor than trying to acquire a new donor. So that's where stewardship really comes into play. So after that first initial thank you with them, I invited them to come sit uh, down with me for a meeting because I could tell that they were interested in supporting the school further. So we sat down and had a, a good conversation about the direction of the school, specifically our technology program. And I put together a proposal of how they could you know, help the school specifically around outfitting our technology lab. And it was about a $33,000 proposal. And you know, they had initially budgeted $25,000 for the gift. Well, this was in early May, and everyone was going on vacation. So I stayed in touch with them throughout the summer, and you know, a couple phone calls here. But you know, they were away in Wyoming on a, a Native American ranch, and were traveling all over. So didn't really have the face-to-face -face, uh, that I would like to, trying to progress them through uh, the antiquated term that I'm not a fan of, uh, moves management. I really think we need something newer and fresher. But really taking them from that first gift to their next gift and you know, to a major gift level. And it came to mid-July, and we were getting ready for school, and I needed to purchase the materials. You know, we had on this wish list for the proposal was a brand new 3D printer and all this Adobe uh, uh, Creative Suite software and 20 new MacBook Airs so to truly create this lab. Well, thankfully, uh, they were very much interested. And I said to them on our final phone call, I said, I understand that philanthropy is very personal, and I'm not one to rush a donor into making a decision, but we're at the point of the year where I, where I need to know whether or not you're going to do it. And I kind of just threw it out there, and they said, you know what, Josh, we're going to do it. We're going to pull the trigger. We're going to make that gift. And it was phenomenal. So here's a family who went from being at the school for five years, never having made a gift, to 90 days later they had already made a major gift of $33,000. This family is now super committed. Uh, this mother is my annual fund co-chair. She's also a Great Give Committee uh, co-chair member for this year, which is phenomenal because, as I said, last year there was no committee. And here we are um, one year later, and I've been meeting with this family, uh, with these group of uh, families for months and months now, planning what is going to be a huge part of our not just giving for annual fund, but the overall culture of our school. I had about a two-hour meeting with them this morning, uh, putting together final details as we get closer. And one mother said, I want this to be a tradition. I want what we're setting uh, up for the school to be something that families will remember year in and year out and want to be a part of. And for me, that's just so exciting to see how quickly they've gotten behind it. So as you saw with uh, my images, I did a lot of those in Photoshop. Well, a lot of people don't have necessarily access to Photoshop. So there are a lot of great tools out there to uh, be able to not only create content, but to share content and monitor content. So I'm going to share my screen here, and hopefully this should work, which it did. So the first thing you see here is a tool that's called Hootsuite. Uh, it's a fabulous way to curate and monitor content setting up these different streams uh, based on various interests. Um, here you can see my Great Give 15 uh, stream as well as my Give Local 15 stream. And here people are uh, tweeting along live, so thank you for those who are doing that. Um, but it gives me a chance to see at all times what's going on regarding a very specific subject. I can go and click on Give Local and see what they're tweeting out about uh, at any time or who's mentioning them in a tweet. But uh, it's important because you want to be able to listen and engage with your support base. It's not uh, as effective if you're sitting back and waiting for something to happen as opposed to listening to what your su supporters are out there saying about you and engaging them on their level. So if a donor makes a gift to you online, you want to make sure you're thanking them online because they've gone to that level to make sure uh, we're able to stay connected. Another tool that I use is something called Canva. What's great about Canva, and it's uh, canva.com, it allows you to create these pre-canned templates. And here's uh, for various sizes, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook cover, Twitter. So where you, know, you want to know, okay, well, a Facebook post is 940 pixels by 788 pixels. If I don't have Photoshop to put that into, I can click on this 
and already have it um, pre-populated with the proper size. So I did a couple uh, sample ones to show you. Here is one uh, on donor gratitude, and it's a, a donor haiku uh, that I had written a couple years ago through a program called Gratitude Camp. Uh, donors are heroes. Their impact changes the world. It makes them feel special. And that's what we want to do. We want to show donor love because they are the ones who are going to be the game changers and the ones who are going to be the world changers for what we're trying to do. Uh, yes, there's those nonprofits that if we do our job right, they won't exist anymore. And while as unfortunate that may be, but that's what, that's what we're in it for. We're in it as fundraisers to make sure donors' passions are connected to causes and we can someday either alleviate that cause or further that cause along the way. Uh, another one that I made, and this was a concept that I had uh, just found out about. I just got back from the Association of Fundraising Professionals International Conference in Baltimore. It was 4,000 fundraisers that descended upon Baltimore from 25 countries for four days to learn and network um, and share. And Lynn Wester, who uh, you can find online at Donor Guru, is top-notch when it comes to donor relations and stewardship. Well, she came up with this concept of something called Gratitude Day. So every Tuesday, she posts on social media various posts or ways to thank your donors uh, around this Gratitude Gratitude Day concept. Um, so that's something I'm going to plan on running with uh, as we go forward with uh, with the Great Give uh, campaign. So how do we schedule our content? Well, yes, you can schedule through Hootsuite. But what I really like about Buffer, and that's Buffer app, uh, there's an app for it, or Buffer.com, is it pre-populates your images directly into Hootsuite, where if you use some other pre-scheduling uh, content uh, platforms, it doesn't necessarily automatically pre-populate your image. Um, so here's one that I have a, a tweet set to go out in about 20 minutes today uh, at 2.50. Uh, Show your donors the love they deserve. And then I have the various hashtags related to our giving event as well as the Give Local, and then I've tagged uh, the Community Foundation, the United Way, Give Local, and TechSoup. So in about 20 minutes, this will go out. Now I could share it right now, which I'm going to do. So this will go out. And that tweet has just been sent. But what's nice is you're able to have it either uh, create on a time based when you want, or you can have it uh, pre-populate with an auto-schedule feature. So these are some different tweets that I have scheduled for the next few days. Um, and then here's one for next Tuesday, you know, what are you grateful for on Gratitude Day? So hoping to see something like that, how it will pick up, and creating a question, because what's great on social media is if you end a post with a question mark versus a period, your level of engagement on that post will go up um, exorbitantly, because you have a chance to have your supporters, your people that are engaging with you, interact. And that's really what social media is about. It's about creating a forum to not just share content, but become engaged with that content. So Buffer is great. You can also add not just Twitter, but you can add a Facebook profile, a page, a group. You can connect LinkedIn, uh, Google+, uh, various services. So very, very highly recommended. Uh, both Hootsuite and Buffer are free. Canva is also free. There are paid features of those platforms, uh, but for the uh, general user, you are more than fine using their, that basic uh, platform. Another uh, last sh uh, resource I'll share is something called Spruce. Uh, it's tryspruce.com. I believe this is uh, by Prezi, I think, are the ones who uh, created this. Um, but it's strictly for Twitter, and it has a much larger database of free images from which you can choose. And it's very simple to use. You can just type in here what you want to have, and you can just save it, share it out, and you're done. So in literally 15 seconds, you can create a viral image to share out there with your uh, supporters. So let's go back into here. Um, so that's everything that I did last year. Those are the tools that I use. So how are we moving forward for this year? Well, as I mentioned, uh, we now have a committee. And I have a very dedicated group of parents who are helping us. So we have gone from a 10-day communications plan to a 90-day communications plan. And as we move closer to May 5th and May 6th, we will have a much higher level of engagement with our family members. Um, we've started putting out Twitter uh, posts and Facebook posts. And what was nice is that the Community Foundation and United Way were having a social media contest leading up to 
um, the rate give. And there was about a month there where it was you had a chance to create uh, interesting and engaging content, and then there was uh, voted upon uh, to see who the winner was. Something else that we're going to be doing this year is phone solicitations. Uh, we're not going to be doing a hard ask. It's going to be more subtle. Uh, on May 4th, we're going to have a volunteer group call our, all our families, and ideally our goal is to have uh, family members within that grade level call other grade level family members because you know, a seventh grader getting a call from a kindergarten family that they've never heard of before isn't going to mean the same thing if they have someone within their own grade level calling. So there's simply going to be a call saying, you know, please join us tomorrow on May 5th for our Cinco de Mayo celebration, and as well as join us on May 6th for our celebration of everything Y School at our Great Give Showcase where we'll have an author day's performance as well as other things. And the last line is going to be, please support the Y School on the Great Give. And that's it. 15 second conversation, no hard ask, nothing, you know, give us now, but just a reminder that we will be having this event coming up. So, some uh, images that I've did this year. Um, this was one that I had as part of the contest. I believe this is one of the contest finalist entries. And it was fun. I, I, every day I was trying to come up with, well, how can I incorporate the Great Give logo as well as continue the running brand, as you see, just like I had last year, support gifted education, the school logo, and the hashtag. That way, anytime you see any of our images, you know what it, uh, what it relates to. Well, the contest was also going on during the Oscars, and as we all know, the Oscars is a huge time for social media, um, as with any major national event, the Super Bowl, uh, anything where there's going to be a lot of people watching. So what I did was I created this image you know, in maybe five, ten minutes, and with the notion of trying to, quote unquote, hijack the Oscars hashtag. So by imp uh, implementing this tweet and this image who, uh, with the Oscars hashtag, Anyone who was following along with that Oscars hashtag also saw this image that we had shared, which was great because it got our message out there to a larger audience. Another campaign that I'm doing this year is something called I Am. I am a gifted student. So we're creating these images and very um, compelling images with the simple starting line, I am, and then something uh, related to that. So this one you see our early childhood student, I am inquisitive. Here's one, I am a critical thinker. So I've taken this to the next level, and we're going to be creating 15-second uh, spots of our students saying, my name is Glenn, I am 12 years old, I am a future scientist, I am a gifted student, support the Great Give. And these images and videos will be uh, starting to pop up on social media as we get closer. They'll also be shared within the school. And we're also doing a 30-second PSA with a slideshow of photos over uh, some of our uh, very compelling content. And the key thing here is you want to create engaging content that is compelling that looking at, hearing, you know what the cause is, you know who is talking, and what you're supporting. So as I mentioned, we're having a Cinco de Mayo party here because it's nice that it kicks off on May 5th. So we're having uh, some chips and dip and something, you know, celebration for our families. We're going to have uh, some DJ uh, music, but we also uh, want to highlight our students because that's what this is about. So I'm working with our Spanish teacher. They're going to be putting together some performances, some poetry, some songs, some dance, and going to be uh, headlining this event on May 5th because our giving day is from May 5th at 5 p.m. until May 6th at 5 p.m. The next day, as part of our Centers of Excellence Language Arts Initiative, each student this year has become an author. They have uh, put together in a book, and it will be a hard, count, hard bound uh, published book that will allow them to walk away at the end of the year saying, here's a collection of all my work, whether that's poetry, whether that's a short story, whether that's uh, an article they wrote for the school newspaper, something that makes them say how proud they are. So they're going to have a chance to read each of their stories on a grade level basis to all of their families in our media center. So, we're going to have that going on while simultaneously in what we like to call our campaign headquarters in our cafeteria is going to be uh, a flurry of action. We're going to have our innovation station, which will have uh, various bank of computers with the various different computer software that our students have been working on, the different uh, code that they've been writing. We're going to have our robotics on display. We're going to have our 3D printer out there. 
We're going to have an art gallery. We're going to have um, our art teacher is going to be working with each grade level, and we're going to have two giant four by eight foot canvas banners that is almost going to be a kind of a paint by number, and we're going to have these great masterpiece arts like a Starry Night. And as the day progresses and as we raise more money, then we will be completing these paintings. Uh, we're also going to have a debate competition. We're going to be having our Taekwondo students doing a demonstration. We're going to be having our band and our chorus and our play all highlighted within this day because that's what it's about. It's a celebration of what makes us so special and the reason that people are supporting us. But what's more important than just supporting this school is that we also want to support the community. So we're going to be having hands-on community service projects that day. Uh, we have a very large uh, culture of community service within our students here at the school. On average, I would say there's probably a good dozen or so different community service projects that happen, whether that's collecting canned foods for a food drive or collecting uh, bags, uh, disposable bags, you know, a Publix type bag that you would get, uh, the uh, nylon canvas bag to give to the Homeless Coalition. Well, we've collected uh, toiletries for the local VA hospital, but there's always something going on. So we want this day to be a continuance of that culture of giving because it's important for our students to learn from an early age that it's important to give back. So we'll be doing, uh, and we're still finalizing the projects, whether that's making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the local homeless coalition, or if it's going to be writing letters to soldiers, or if it's going to be uh, making phone calls and just saying thank you to uh, our supporters. But we want to make sure that the students are very much more engaged with this uh, than anything. As Lori also mentioned, it's important to have a goal. Uh, so we've set a goal for this year uh, of $50,000, and uh, we will certainly exceed that. Uh, that's my goal. And my personal goal is to be the number one uh, highest grossing nonprofit in Palm Beach and Martin County to raise the most money that day. Not necessarily the most donors, but the highest grossing totals. And one way that I'm hoping to achieve this is that we've been soliciting pledges leading up to May 5th and May 6th. That way we're getting commitment from both minor, uh, smaller level donors as well as our major level donors that will make that commitment and uh, step up to the plate and say, yes, I'm going to give a dollar, I'm going to give $10, I'm going to give $10,000, what have you, on that day knowing that they're part of something bigger. Because together, we're going to make a larger impact than as with a single gift. So it's very exciting, the energy that is going to be flowing through here, especially as we get closer. And one last uh, mini campaign that I have going on uh, is something, and this is a challenge that I'm placing to all of you. It's something called a Frelfi. And a Frelfi is a fun fundraising selfie. And here you can see a little Frelfi I did the other day, and I used a simple little app on my iPhone called Over, uh, which allowed me to do this Frelfi graphic down here and this Be Grateful. Uh, but the whole point is to share what we're, uh, why, why we're giving, what makes us special, why are we um, doing what we're doing. And uh, my goal is to get this Frelfi, to get a Frelfi trending leading up to the Great Give. So I'm, I'm imploring all of you to go out there, snap a Frelfi, post it online, and share what you're grateful for and why you're giving gratitude and why it is important to support nonprofits um, both locally, nationally, and internationally. And I'm now going to turn it back over to Lori, and uh, she can fill us in on a little bit more. Well, thank you so much, Josh. Um, I think one of the things that strikes me, um, and I hope with the audience, is that um, so this is an online fundraising campaign, but um, it, I mean, it has, it hits so many different components. You can see a lot of the activities. Well, it's uh, the campaign itself um, is is around, you know, getting donations online. Um, you know, he's Josh and, and team have built this into a way to highlight its, his mission, um, build awareness for his organization, and really be creative. So. Um, Josh, I, I applaud you for that, and thanks for the great resources and tools. Um, I wanted to, um, bef to um, before I pass this along, just tell you, I know that some of you on, on the call are participating or have participated in a given day, but about half at, at the early part have not or are not participating in one. Um, and um, we thank TechSoup for the opportunity to do this webinar um, at the perfect time. We are um, 
hosting, and the Great Give is a partner in it, uh, a, a program called Give Local America on 5515. Um, and we are inviting any and all nonprofits. So if you don't have a local host, um, uh, or you do and you've missed their deadline, to participate and register at givelocal15.org. So we'll be creating communities of nonprofits. Um, because we think that this is a, a great tool in your fundraising toolkit. Um, it is a, a great time to do it. So this is the springtime. Um, this is an opportunity for you to try a new campaign leading up to potentially a year-end campaign and building this in. Um, and uh, so we really encourage you to join us. You can learn how to register at givelocal15.org. We have a ton of free resources and trainings at GiveLocalAmerica.org. So some of the stuff that Josh mentioned, um, there's some tips and tricks on all the different, a variety of different social media tools, um, and more on online fundraising strategies for nonprofits. Um, and it's not too late to join. So with that, I'm going to transfer it back to Becky and say thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Lori. And you know, I think a great point, uh, it came up in the chat a little bit, somebody asking about how do they sign up and somebody else saying, well, our deadline has passed. But you know, one thing that I think is amazing about these online campaigns is that even if you're not registered, I mean, clearly we want you to be signed up so we can really track the overall impact of these different campaigns, whether it's your local community foundation, whether it's um, a day affiliated with a cause, and everybody's just doing it together on that day or that week, um, or whether it's through a campaign like Give Local America with Give Local 15, you know, you can still latch on to the hashtags, to the social media uh, attention, even if you don't have time to do a whole concerted campaign this year. And that's where we really thought even though we're coming up pretty close to 5515, we wanted to make sure that people are aware of the strategies that can be used because a lot of these things that Josh um, showed, you know, using Canva and throwing that hashtag on an image and sharing it on your Facebook is something that could take three minutes, five minutes, and can involve you in those campaigns even if you don't have the opportunity or the logistical moxie this year to get yourself registered or if you've missed it. Um, and Lori, before I switch to showing a couple of other tools before we get into full Q&A, um, what is the deadline if people want to register directly through GiveLocal15.org? Is there a deadline there? Um, yes, so the deadline to participate is April 12. Um, so you still right, have so you've got 10 days. <laughs> Yep, and the registration process is really easy. You just have to be a 501c3 um, or have a fiscal sponsor. Um, and it's just a short little survey. And then with that, we create a donation page for you, and you're all set to go. Great. And you know, I saw a question just pop up in chat about, what about if you're a library and you're part of a municipality, not technically a nonprofit, 501c3? Well, even though you may not be able to participate directly with Give Local 15 uh, through their registration, if there is momentum in your community around giving local on that day, there's no reason that I think your library could also be chatting out because people do love to support their local public libraries because you do so much for the community, you do so much for your town, your neighborhood, the kids that come there after school every day. So, you know, I think any cause that's a good cause that people care about, people could jump on that bandwagon if there's one already kind of bubbling up in your community or in your region. So before we get into full Q&A, I want to go ahead and just show a few other resources and some other tools that are also available in TechSoup's, uh, donor, or TechSoup's product catalog. Sorry. Uh, and so I just wanted to highlight this fundraising page that we have on our site. So in addition to using tools like Kimbia or some of the you know, social media platforms that are out there. If you're looking for an online fundraising tool and you don't have one for full-time use or all the time, uh, there are some fundraising tools that are available for donation. And I'm just going to highlight a couple of them here. Uh, CauseVox is an online fund fundraising platform, and they do have a donation through TechSoup uh, for eligible nonprofits. Teespring is a, an apparel fundraising tool, so you can use this to help create t-shirts for your cause or your charity or your library. Um, 
Shopify is an online storefront that you can access uh, if you have buttons or tote bags or mugs or products that you produce or gear that you produce that you want your supporters to carry around, and it helps you fundraise. connect to give is another fundraising platform that helps you with mobile fundraising. So if you want to have people able to text uh, or send text messages to them to encourage them to donate on a day like uh, May 5th, you can have connect to give set up to help you do that. Guide by Cell, which is this one down here that doesn't have a name attached to it. That's their logo. It's the little cell phone picture. They also have an online mobile fundraising platform that they help equip you with a mobile donation site and uh, mobile-friendly SMS text fundraising. And then Tint is the last one I'll mention. It's not specifically a fundraising tool. It's more of a social media tool like what Josh was showing earlier that helps you feed um, your social media channels into one place where people can access it. If they are following a day-long campaign for example, they can follow it all on your Tint. So I just wanted to highlight those few tools in case people are interested in other uh, tool donations or um, products that can help them with their online fundraising efforts. And then I also wanted to highlight quickly a few resources on our site. So if you are looking to gain donors online, if you are looking to crowdfund, and so this was a webinar we did, Crowdfunding Your Way to Year-End Success. We did this in the fall before Giving Tuesday because so much of your donation support from the majority of nonprofits happens in that last quarter of the year. So we have done a couple of events back-to-back -back around crowdfunding for year-end campaigns and Giving Tuesday and year-end fundraising. So check those out if you are looking for more as you run into the you know, late summer, early fall, and you are planning out your campaign strategies for the rest of the year. We have events that we have done on fundraising with social media, great tools for friend-to-friend -friend fundraising, for ticketed events if you are having a Cinco de Mayo party and you want to charge a few bucks and earn some money off of it, um, if you are looking to do an online auction as part of your fundraising. So we have got great resources. If you are joining us from a church today, I just wanted to highlight this one since we have a lot of churches that are now part of our, uh, part of our network and our audience, uh, that we have you know, content that we are creating specifically to help you figure out what is out there that can help you technologically manage all of the things you need to do every day including fundraising and connecting with your supporters. So there is a lot on our site. Definitely check some of that out. And you can also go to our digital engagement forum and ask questions, get experiences from others. And I'm going to go ahead and jump into questions since we have a bunch in queue already. So we had a question for well, here's a general one that I'll ask. Sharon asks, how do you identify a donor's passion, especially when you have no real donor base currently, like if you don't have that connection? Uh, Josh, it seems like something that may be a little bit more straightforward when you've got their kids at your school, then obviously parents want to support their kids in their success. So maybe this is a question more for Lori. How do you advise people to help identify uh, you know, their passion so that they want to come in and donate to you. Have any tips sure. on that? Sure. Um, I think that's actually a really, I mean, that's a really challenging question, and I'll ask Josh also to chime in. But I would say that um, trying, I mean, as Josh mentioned, like even though he has an engaged audience of um, donors, um, trying an online campaign and just sharing it out through your network and seeing who they can kind of drum up for support will help you find um, other individuals who may have some interest or passion in your organization. So I think doing some sort of online fundraising campaign is a good way to do that. Um, I'm not sure that you can tell a donor's passion without without doing that. Um, you can also, I mean, there's all sorts of old school ways like looking at, you know, Donor recognition from other organi like organizations or, or things like that, but I think that's the sort of power and benefit of doing an online fundraising strategy is, is that that's going to help you identify people who either uh, who care about your organization or care about those individuals who care about your organization. And, and right. to go off what Lori was saying. Yes, these families may be within the school, so we know that they're invested in their child's education. But there's so much, you know, from left to right that you can be in, interested in when it comes to education. Some people are very much interested in the arts. Some people are very much interested in science and technology, or it could be language arts, or it could be math. It's about 
personal connection, and you know, that's really what fundraising is all about. It's about being a good storyteller. It's about being personable and making those personal connections. Um, and then stewardship. It's how you're going to, once you have their foot in the door, keep them around. You know, getting that next donation next year or next month or going from a $2,000 donation <laughs> as they did with that, uh, up to a $33,000 donation for a major donor uh, 90 days later. Great. And I think those are all really helpful um, tips for people to help really connect. Um, Lori, we have a bunch of people asking about specific areas, wondering, you know, is there a Give Local thing happening, happening in Cleveland? Or if you are already signed up for a local one in San Antonio, can you also sign up for Give Local 15? Well, how's, yeah, how does sure. that work? Is there a single place where people can look to see if their community is already represented with a Giving Day coming up soon? So you can see, if you go to GiveLocalAmerica.org and um, click on who's participating, you'll see where we have a community lead so far. Um, we, do, we are in the process of, um, create, like I said, creating communities of nonprofits so where there isn't a um, United Way or foundation who's providing sort of that, um, the camp or doing the campaign like in Josh's case. Um, we do have you know, interest from um, organizations in Cleveland and Chicago and New York and you know, all over. And so we, we are um, – so but if you go to GiveLocalAmerica.org and you, you check there and see who's participating, you'll see if there's an event that's um, being hosted by one of our partners um, near you. If not, we are inviting you to participate. Um, we don't want you to be left out, and we, we really do want to create – the opportunity for everyone to be able to give local. So you would um, you can find there under the nonprofits um, tab how to register on that givelocal15.org site. Right, um, but if they're already affiliated the with a local one, they shouldn't sign up for both. I wouldn't. I think that just creates a lot of donor confusion. And if there is a local partner, that's going to be the that's going to be your best bet because they're going to be focused on promoting your organization and the organizations in Great. And Lori, before I have some questions for Josh, um, a couple of people are asking about, you know, is there a percentage of the funds that go to Give Local America as part of using the Kimbia platform? Or how does the money come to the organization once, uh, you know, through that platform after the event, after the Giving Day? Yeah, sure. Um, so if you're going to participate in uh, Give Local America, there is a there's no fee to sign up um, and register. There is standard with all fundraising platforms a, a transaction fee that is 5.25% that covers credit card and um, platform costs. So 5.25% of the donation goes to support credit cards and technology costs. Great. Thank you for that. So now switching to Josh, we had some questions specifically. Um, you know, one person asked, you know, for your project last year, what did you estimate for the, as the cost or the expenses that you put out for um, your investment last year? And how would you compare that with you know, having a 10-day lead time last year to a 90-day lead time in a committee this year um, as, in terms of cost? How much does it cost you to really do all of this? Last year, I think I spent $0.00 to raise 38000 uh, This year we're spending a little more uh, because we are creating more marketing materials. We're going to have a direct mail piece that goes out to our families, uh, giving them information about the day itself uh, with the uh, schedule of activities as well as uh, information about you know, the school and why they should support us. Uh, we're going to be purchasing some banners to hang up around school. So you know, our investment will be minimal, uh, but we know that we'll get that return. Uh, because it's really about building those relationships with our families and building it to the point where this is something that they expect each year. Uh, we have an annual fund, and this is going to be, as we saw last year, was the largest day of giving and largest uh, net that we got for our annual fund, as opposed to like you know little gifts throughout the year. This was a one big uh, chunk of change that we got uh, when all was said and done. Um, so sometimes you need to spend money to make money, and it's very true. Um, we've done some Facebook advertising this year 
uh, which I don't think there's an, a more cost-effective way to reach out to a potential market. Uh, with all the information that Facebook gathers on us, um, yes, it's a little scary how much they know, but from a marketer's standpoint, it's a treasure trove of gold. You could sit there and you could put an ad in the newspaper and maybe you'll get a phone call. Uh, but I've done two campaigns, uh, specifically one for likes to our Facebook page and one to increase clicks to our website. Both are $500 campaigns and the cost of acquisition for uh, a new like on our page is about $0.53 cents, and the click through to our website is about $0.80. Cents. Uh, since December 9th, I've increased about 400 likes on our page and over 700 click-throughs to our website. And this is very targeted, you know, people that live 25 miles from in the school, have a family, are interested in education, specifically in, you know, gifted education. Uh, so we have seen, as a result of that, the number of uh, tours have gone up for the school, as well as engagement on, in our social media posts on Facebook. You know, it's unfortunate the way that they have changed their business model that now it's really a pay-to-play sort of thing where, yes, you may have 1,000 people that like your page, but such a small percentage are actually going to actually see your content that if you have important information that you want to get out there, you need to do Facebook advertising and you need to do Facebook posts. Yes, I understand this is not for all nonprofits of all sizes and all budgets, uh, but it is a recommendation that if you do have a little bit of marketing budget available, that Facebook advertising is a great way to reach out to a very captured and engaged audience. Great. Well, thank you for that. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up. I know we didn't get to every question, but a lot of great ones have been answered both in chat and through the Q&A. Definitely check out some of those resources. And let us know in the chat window one thing you learned today in our webinar that you might try and implement or work toward for your own organization's benefit. And please take a moment after you get the uh, follow-up email later today feel free to share that with your colleagues and friends who may benefit from it as well. We want to make sure that everyone knows about opportunities like this and can participate as much as they are able to. I'd also like to invite you to join us for upcoming webinars and events. Next week we'll be talking about your nonprofit and values-based brand. Then we'll be talking about Are Tablets Just Toys? How to Get Work Done, and Be Green with Mobile Devices in this Earth Month that we are now in. If you are joining us from a library, you can join us to talk about uh, referring social services at your library. We know many of you are hubs for local social services and referrals. Uh, you can also then join us to learn more about how to find free and legal to use images and media. So we will be talking about music and images for your social media and website and collateral materials on the 23rd. And then on April 30th we will be talking about how to launch your 2015 grants plan with GrantStation. So please feel free to join us for any of those or all of them. You will get links in the email later today. You can also join us at TechSoupGlobal.org, TechSoup.org, or on our Facebook and our Twitter. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you Josh and Lori for your participation and for sharing your expertise. You will get a copy of this presentation, the full recording, and the links we discussed later this afternoon. Thanks to Allie for helping on the back end. And lastly, thank you to ReadyTalk who provides the use of their platform for us to present these webinars on a weekly basis. We also have their donation of the ReadyTalk 500 tool which is what we are using today available in the TechSoup.org catalog. So check it out if you are looking for a webinar tool. And please compl complete the post-event survey when you close out of this window to let us know how we can continue to improve our webinar programming. Thank you all so much. Have a terrific day. Bye-bye.